Well, thanks everybody for making time to join us for our Driven For webinar. We're going to talk today about using IoT to level the playing field in baseball. Um, the agenda we're going to go through today, we'll talk about the presenters. Uh, from there, we'll do a very brief Driven For introduction and we'll spend the majority of the time walking through our project as we started down in 2019 with Major League Baseball on how to help them kind of level the playing field so that every Major League Baseball ballpark has the same baseball and consistency of mud that's applied to the baseball as we go forward. We'll talk in more detail why that's important as well as what the process is because some of you on here may actually not know that there's actually baseballs are mudded with mud coming from the Delaware River. So on the presenter slide, uh, Fred Bellio, well, welcome everybody again, uh, co-founder co and managing partner, uh, been in the industry both on the IoT side and the PLM side for many, many years. Uh, look forward to kind of conveying our project. We're really excited about this project and I'll pass it over to Carl. Everybody, I'm Carl Wendland. I'm also uh, a co-founder of, of Driven4. I've spent my career working uh, in systems development and operations, uh, starting back in the Air Force and then R&D systems at Mercury Marine and then off to Whirlpool to do uh, consumer facing connected products. Go ahead, Ryan. Yeah, Ryan Slaw, I've been with uh, Driven4 for about two years now. Prior to that, I was with uh, National Laboratory. I've been 24 years in the industry with design, research, uh, build, and deploy of embedded systems, IoT systems, uh, you name it, systems, basically. I have degrees in uh, electrical engineering and software engineering and systems engineering. Well, thank you, Ryan and Carl. Well, we're going to go to the Driven4 introduction piece of this, and we'll get Carl to walk us through that. All right, if we can go to the next slide. Okay, so who is uh, Driven4 and why us? So we, we are, we're, we're folks just like you. We worked in the industry for years uh, before we uh, branched out and, and started Driven4 as, as a consulting company. It's, I think we're on year six now, roughly. Um, we are technology, technology leaders from our, our previous roles at different companies and uh, very knowledgeable in the areas of uh, product lifecycle management. Uh, anything regarding the Internet of Things, whether it's uh, connected products facing a consumer or connected factories. Uh, a ton of knowledge when it comes to uh, manufacturing and cybersecurity. So key is we've we've been working on these systems our whole careers and now we come out and we try to help uh, folks like you do the same. Next slide. Yep. All right. So what's our competitive advantage? Um, so we, we have a holistic approach that's, I think, pretty, pretty important. Uh, we like to be very strategic about how we uh, engage with different organizations. Um, and we follow a uh, people, what are the processes and how do we map those processes to systems approach to, uh, to deliver the right kind of uh, solution set for, for what problems you face. Next slide. Our service offerings are, that's a full stack, um, any, anything from uh, strategy to process development, uh, implementations of technology, whether it's uh, um, within the uh, manufacturing R&D departments to uh, actual consumer products that, uh, that you deliver to the marketplace. Um, we, we, we also do have a fairly uh, robust customer support framework that we use. We have uh, proven frameworks and solutions. Uh, we've been doing this a long time. And uh, one of our key differentiators is that uh, we, we have uh, a, a good set of people throughout the globe. And um, we've, been, we've been doing this a long time since, as I mentioned earlier, we, we were you guys. Next slide. Uh, the focus of this slide is it's a lot going on here. It's just to highlight our solution stack. Uh, we are very, uh, very keen on digital transformation and uh, we, we take connected product development very seriously. We know that's the future and we've, we've been implementing systems like this for a long time now. And we just wanted to highlight that, uh, uh, whether it's on the, the life cycle management side or the connected factory 
slash consumer facing IoT product to any of the, the, the experience that your end customers might use, whether it be mobile um, or uh, you know, web app point of view, end to end system integration, testing, uh, cybersecurity from the beginning at design all the way embedded through development and ongoing um, um, uh, penetration testing throughout the life cycle during the, the operations piece. We, we focus uh, pretty much everywhere within the stack. Thank you, Carl. So now why you're all here. Um, let's talk a little bit about the project and what we've been doing. So this project has been working with Major League Baseball since 2019. I want to give a little bit of a background of, you know, just in case folks on the line don't really have a good understanding of the baseball and what gets done to a baseball before it gets used in a game. Um, baseballs for Major League Baseball come from Rawlings, Rawlings in Puerto Rico. They come out of these uh, factories in a very, I call it slippery, shiny kind of perspective, very hard to control from a pitcher perspective or if you're throwing the baseball. Back in the 1950s, they decided, well, we just can't use the baseballs as they're coming out of the factory. We actually have to apply some mud to it. Um, this started in the 1950s. It's kind of funny because the process and the actual mud is consistent from the 1950s to 2023. Um, it's actually the mud that comes out of the Delaware River. It's uh, out of one location and one manufacturer, or should I say one digger that actually digs up the mud. Uh, and then it's actually very coarse. It's got as mud would be, it has some things in it that you don't want like rocks and things, but it also is very good at applying to the baseball and applying a grip. Um, what happens though, if you look at the instructions here at the end of this page, all that Major League Baseball says is you take two fingers, you put it in the mud container, you pull it out, and then you apply it evenly across the whole surface of the baseball for no more than 40 seconds. So think about the interpretation that can occur there and understand all the deviations that come from that. And the far right, we're showing you an actual certification of what Major League Baseball is expecting. You'll see the light baseballs that can come. You'll see the dark baseballs that can actually come and their targets, the one in the middle. The idea here is really to be able to say, hey, can we make things consistent? And I'll go into on the next page a little bit more detail why that's important. Uh, so the challenge at hand is really, you know, has the mud been applied for the right amount? Does it give the right feel and texture so it can be controlled as it's being thrown? And at the same time, what does the difference make? You know, why would it be? Well, just keep in context that each Major League Baseball club actually has their own folks actually apply this mud. Um, as we've gone through this process and this project, what we're finding is that there is a difference between clubs and they have a tendency to either make the ball lighter or darker than the actual certification standard based on the preference of the pitchers or the hitters of the team. And you can just kind of see it if you think about it, right? A lighter baseball, if you're throwing a lighter baseball, you can see the threads, you can see if it's a fastball, you can see if it's actually a curveball, you can see how the rotation comes. The darker the baseball, the harder it is to identify which baseball kind of pitch is thrown at you. Um, so there is a little bit of what I call is preference based on each Major League Baseball and if they have a great pitching kind of organization or if they have a great hitting organization. Uh, the other challenge is once those instructions are given to Major League Baseball clubs by Major League Baseball, the only thing they can do is actually kind of give them those. There's no real way to control what is actually used. The only final kind of stopping point from a control perspective is the umpires. And even the umpires have a little bit of, uh, I'll call it discretion on what they believe is the right baseball. We've worked with them. Um, and you'll see preferences based on which individual umpire you're working with. Um, from there, really, our goal is really to do a couple of things, right? One, we want to make the process totally repeatable, irrespective of which baseball club, which irrespective of 
uh, where and how it's being applied. We also want to make it consistent so that there's a repeatable process that actually can be certified. So if it's consistent and repeatable, I can certify the process and the process is certified. And I'm just going to slip back a couple of slides to this middle image. So if you think about the target, that is the goal that we're trying to certify the actual process to. Um, we still use the exact same mud, which is the magic mud for baseball. Um, we also are certifying for Major League Baseball the actual look and texture based on that certification image of each baseball that will be used in Major League Baseball. And then we are also providing, I'll call it evidence artifacts at each one of the clubs that actually says, okay, here's the baseballs you have, and here's what they have certified to. And then Ryan will talk about all the technical details in a little bit. Uh, but we also provide evidence that the baseball was actually produced with the mudding process in the ball mudder, as it's called, because uh, we actually have a ultraviolet ink uh, serial number that gets applied to each baseball. So you can actually tell if that actual baseball came out of our machine or if it did not. So if you think about all the things I'm talking about, we really incorporate digital imaging, the automated controls, the IT technology for gathering, certifying, providing certification. Uh, and we actually, you know, the whole design from a mechanical perspective, electrical perspective, embedded technology and software has been our project from the start. So we're pretty proud of, you know, the opportunity as well as the where we've gotten to date. Um, we have six steps in our actual process. And we'll show you a video of uh, our opportunity to work with the NCAA Big 12 organization. But it starts with step one. And I just wanna keep in context, when we started this project was just before, it was January as our friends in COVID hit in March. Uh, but that's exactly when we started, was in the prime time just before COVID started. We built these machines actually through code. So you can just imagine how that works and then how that is when it comes to kind of getting anything done for those two years through COVID. Uh, you'll also see why we added the UV light for disinfection. So as the ball comes into the machine, it actually gets disinfected with UV light before it actually gets into the actual machine. Step two is actually the first, what we classify process for spraying and buffing. And you'll see this as we go through the video. But the context of step two and three was if we try to complete everything in one shot, the likelihood of us either overshooting or undershooting would be more difficult. And we've tried this through many trials and experiments. Uh, so the concept was get us to 30% of our end, end goal of certified color. We have digital imagery that actually looks at the coloring based on the target and the certified image to what we're actually have on the baseball as it's getting processed. And then we stop there. And then the step three is actually take it to the last level. So it's hundred percent. And what we found is some of the, I'll call it context of what you see in an eye versus what we can capture in digital imagery. We are up more finer from a refinement of what we can actually produce versus what the eye can catch. Then in step four, we actually make sure it's actually two code to the certified code, and then we print the actual serial number on it. And then if we never got to a number that actually fits from an end product, we have two steps. One, if it's unacceptable, we will reject the baseball right now. Our results are less than 3% of the baseballs that come through are actually in that gamut. And then step six is we move and put it in a baseball bag ready for the actual game. Uh, just to let you know, each baseball game actually requires 12 dozen baseballs to be mudded to be able to know and go from there. Um, the other piece is we also take all this information, we make it available and we make it available in two contexts. One is the context of Major League Baseball, which is they get to see everything and they get to compare how everybody's using the actual technology. And then we have the version for each baseball club and they have context and access to that 
particular baseball club and uh, team and not everybody else. So there's a bit of a control kind of understanding of what's going on, but also, you know, understanding that each team can actually look at things as they go forward. And now I'm going to pass it to Ryan. Thank you, Fred. Um, as Fred was mentioning before, repeatability was the name of the game on putting this system together. Uh, we want to be able to apply the same amount of material over and over to these to the baseballs and to buff them to the proper uh, visual consistency. Uh, of course, that correlated to the the grip consistency, if you want to put it that way. This was done by creating a custom circuit board with all the control systems and controlled by a single board computer, uh, Linux running um, background programming in Python and C to control the different aspects of what's of what's going on in the system. From a very high level, if you look at the system, it has a, a turntable base that rotates, taking the ball through the entire process from the incoming to, uh, to kicking it out at the end. As Fred said earlier, um, we have a hopper method where it's an automatic dispense. Uh, the balls are put in the hopper, automatically dispensed into the system one by one as the, as the process allows. On their way into the carriage, it gets disinfected with the UV light. This is again controlled with the system. It can turn that off or on as needed, usually on uh, for the purpose of, of the process. Uh, the rotating platform has high resolution stepper control for speed, travel distance, uh, and direction. And what that really helps us do is when it gets to the buffer stage, we can control it back and forth. Um, we can control the, the spray speed, or excuse me, the spray dwell time, how much material we're putting out each time, how many times we hit the ball at certain stages, and the speed in which we're buffing and how many passes that we can take. All this so we can start comparing, as Fred said earlier, to the first 30% and then to the 100% plus or minus 5 of the second stage. To do the actual inspection, we utilize camera systems and um, the visual inspection or the digital imaging expect inspection that we can take pictures at each stage, compare it to the color layout. In fact, uh, compared to the very um, diagram that Fred showed earlier, we can do that comparison in what you may want to call machine time to ensure if we need to add more sprays or less spray or more amount, less amount, and buff more or less, depending on the environmental conditions. We found in our experiments, environmental conditions uh, where, where this is occurring can actually modify how the balls react to the material placed on them. So we can, we can see all that and adjust as needed to get that last uh, stage to confirm that the ball is within the parameters met. Um, that inspection allows us to not waste time on those balls that maybe didn't get the application done uh, properly. We, we have noticed in our, in our experiments that you may see the first one go through the process and, and miss the mark a little bit, and so it's rejected. But from then on, it's tightened up when we've run this experiment. We ran it uh, a few years ago, um, or excuse me, last year on quite a number of balls through the day and found that we were able to dial it in uh, really steadily. Um, for those balls that actually pass the inspection, we use again a visual imaging system to rotate the ball and, fair, and put it in a place to where we can cleanly print that number in the uh, UV ink, uh, as Fred was indicating earlier. So it's a serial number tied to tied to that ball and it's tracked everywhere. I'm sure many of you know if you're if you're MLB fans or baseball fans, um, statistics and data, the name of the game. Uh, we can tie a lot of data to this, not only. I mean, we can put in that cloud storage drive uh, the speed at which we buffed, how many times, how much spray we put on the ball, the humidity uh, at the time it was made, the temperature at the time it was made. Everything can go up to track that ball from its uh, spraying, from its mudding to its use, and they can and they can go do um, analysis to see you know what's really going on. But namely, all this um, technology allows us to get that repeatability and that standard met every time with these baseballs. So there's not a little too much mud on this one or not enough on the next one. So before we show the video, I did want to have a couple of just add a couple of points. Um, where are we in the process? So we have two prototypes built 
that have produced over, I would say, 200 dozen baseballs. Um, we have conversations with Major League Baseball, NCAA. Um, there is a lot of work still to be done, um, but we're in the process of making something that is, I believe, game changing. Uh, and what you'll see next is a video from uh, ESPN when we went down to the NCAA and we did all the baseballs. I think it was 60 dozen or a hundred dozen of baseballs for the uh, finals for the uh, NCAA to men's baseball for the Big 12. So I'm going to leave that with that comment there and we're going to start the video. <laughs> All Butter's vision is to provide a consistent, reliable method for producing the color of all baseballs used in all baseball parks while applying the magic mud from the Delaware River. The goal is to automate the process of applying this magic mud to the baseball to certify that each ball going through the process meets the agreed upon standard. The Big 12 is the only conference to use this type of machine. Now there's two prototypes out there and one of them happens to be right there. I think it's great. Save some clubbies, some clubhouse kids time of rubbing up the baseballs. And trust me, there were some umpires that would, you couldn't even see the ball sometimes. They would rub so dark. I love the concept. I love that it can work. All baseballs created equal. I'm glad the Big 12 is working with Ball Mutter here in 2022. So, with that being said, I'd like to open it up to questions. If you want to put a question in the chat, that would be great. Uh, again, uh, you can uh, give us a call at Driven4. Uh, it's Fred at uh, driven 4 dash four dot com Carl or Ryan um, will be glad to take your questions if you have none today uh, we'll be actually posting the webinar for folks that couldn't make it today actually in our YouTube channel and then we'll post it on our website so that you can reference it if you'd like to be you know talking to friends and different colleagues of yours of how even what we've done uh, it's been a, a unique two and a half years worth of work uh, we're having a lot of fun and doing a lot of good things. Um, so, again, I'd like to just say thank you to everybody for joining. I don't see any questions. And uh, if you can join us next uh, month, we'll be having another webinar. We'll be talking about PLM on the product lifecycle management side and how we actually take a concept of digital transformation and turn it into reality. So, on that note, I'd like to say thanks again and have a good rest of your day. Thank you.